Okay, so we're going to have a look at some trig graph transformations now. Okay, uh, graphs of sine and cos and how they can be moved and stretched and flipped and all kinds of things. Um, so, uh, firstly, you really need to know what the graphs of sine and cos look like in the first place. Okay, just the basic graphs, y equals sine of x, y equals cos of x. Okay, so I've drawn y equals sine of x here, and um, it just the main thing here really is that to know that it starts at the origin and begins by going upwards. Okay, and goes between one and minus one, and and so on. Um, we'll talk about a couple of other features in a second, uh, and the cosine graph. Um, Okay, looks exactly the same in the same kind of wave format. Not as neat, but um, that's close enough. Uh, the cosine graph starts at 0, 1 and goes down from there. Okay, uh, has exactly the same uh, width almost as sine, it's just almost just shifted left or right. Okay, um, so next we need to know some terminology and uh, well I've drawn just a, a graph without axes here uh, any kind of wave really um, and how could we label this well uh, this orange line here is meant to be going from one minimum to the next minimum okay it could also go from maximum to maximum um, or any point to its next uh, identical point, okay? And this width, kind of the width of the wave, so how squashed or stretched it is in the horizontal direction, is called the period, okay? Kind of the length of each cycle, okay? Each full cycle. For example, going from here to here would not be a full cycle, even though it crosses this dotted line on both points um, okay one of them is facing upwards one of them is facing down okay if you wanted to do it like that you'd have to start here and go to here okay because that's the next identical point okay uh, these blue lines these blue arrows are denoting or showing what's called the amplitude okay kind of the height of the wave uh, both of these would work as a measure of the amplitude. It's either the central line to the maximum or down to the minimum. Okay, it's a length, so it's always positive. Okay, even if you're measuring it oops, uh, below the axis like this. Okay, and finally, this dotted line in the middle. Okay, which you may not have considered if you're just looking at the, the basic graph of sine, okay, because this dotted line would be uh, basically on the x-axis. Okay, but this horizontal line that goes right through the middle of the wave, okay, um, equal equidistant to the maximum and the minimum uh, vertically, is called the principal axis. Okay, and we'll have an equation, you might want the equation of the principal axis, y equals something. Okay, um, so we can define these in terms of the basic sine graph now. Uh, the amplitude, as you may know, is 1, okay, from 0 to 1 or from 0 to minus 1. Um, the period, uh, well let's go, let's from, go from maximum to maximum. Okay, so this first maximum is at half pi, the second maximum is at uh, 5 pi over 2 or 2 and a half pi. Um, so what is this horizontal distance here? Well, 2 pi or 360 degrees. Okay, and where is the principal axis? Uh, here is on the x-axis, so on y equals 0. So I'm not really going to go over the x-axis with a dotted line for that one. Okay, so knowing those basic facts and knowing that terminology, that allows us to talk about 
uh, trig graph transformations. Now we can do this quite easily just by using uh, rules that you probably have learnt in functions already. Okay, for how to uh, transform any function. Okay, so here, if you do some number times a function, a times f of x, uh, you may know that that denotes uh, or that gives you a vertical stretch. Okay, same thing with the uh, sine wave, sine graph. Um, but how can we talk about this vertical stretch? Well, we can just talk about it uh, stretching the amplitude, actually. Um, okay, so the, we can just say that the amplitude equals, now I'm going to say the absolute value of A, uh, because you could have, for example, minus 2 times f of x. Okay, the 2 will be the amplitude, and the minus will actually just flip the graph, just like it does with uh, any function if you do minus f of x. Okay, so uh, if you see a negative there, okay, the amplitude is still just the positive version, i.e. The, amp uh, the absolute value. Okay, so the absolute value of A uh, is the amplitude. Okay, uh, now you should know if you have if you add a number t on the end of a function, that just shifts everything upwards uh, vertically. Um, so that does the same thing uh, for a sine graph, as you would expect. Um, how can we talk about that, though? Uh, we can talk about the principal axis shifting up. Okay, so the principal axis was at y equals 0, the x-axis. Okay, so if you add d to that, well, 0 plus d, is just d. Okay, so principal axis at y equals d, that horizontal line. Okay, uh, so these next two, uh, these ones are almost counterintuitive. Okay, so if you have f of b times x, um, first thought might be that it stretches horizontally scale factor b. Um, but this one is almost reversed to what you may think initially. It's uh, stretch horizontally 1 over b, or contraction by scale factor b, if you want. Okay, so how can we talk about that in terms of uh, sine graphs? Well, the horizontal stretch is, is basically controlled by uh, the period of the graph. Okay, so that period would be stretched by 1 over b. Okay, so it was 2 pi, and you multiply that by 1 over b. Or, in other words, the period now equals 2 pi over b. Okay, so many students will uh, sort of realize that b affects the period, but um, might forget this exact rule and uh, want to just say that the period equals b. Okay, like the amplitude equals a. Uh, but no, the period equals 2 pi divided by whatever your b is. Okay, and then finally, if you have uh, minus c inside the bracket, uh, it just shifts right, and we have no special terminology for that with sine graphs, it also just shifts right. Okay, so if I had this graph here, and I shifted it right, um, okay, it would just look like that. Okay, there's no special word for it, it just shifts right. Okay, um, so can we use some of these rules all in one go? Uh, let's have a look. Okay, I've got an example here. y equals 2 times sine of x, uh, sine of pi times x minus 1. Okay, so we've got three of our rules that we looked at before. Um, we've got Let's start off with the 2, okay, that's going to tell us the amplitude, amplitude should equal 2. That pi, well, the period equals 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over pi, which equals 2. Okay, so it might be a bit tricky switching between scales where you're using fractions and multiples of pi to one where you're just using regular numbers again. Okay, but that's what you're going to have to do here. The period will just equal 2. 
not two pi, just two. Um, and you have a minus one on the end, which means the principal axis will be at uh, y equals minus one. Okay, good. Now it's just a case of trying to draw it, okay, which you may have to do in an IB exam. Uh, they are quite lenient on doing a nice curve, um, okay, but you have to get uh, at least fairly close to what it should look like. Um, so we know that uh, the original sign graph starts at the origin, uh, but really it just starts um, starts on the principal axis, is what that really means. And so we know it's going to start here at 0 minus 1, effectively. Now, um, the old uh, sine graph just went up 1 and went down 1 at uh, various points. Uh, the amplitude is now 2, so we're going to go up 2 and down 2 from minus 1. Okay, so that's going from uh, 1 to minus 3. Um, the period is two, is 2, so that means I'm going to have a, an identical point at 2 minus 1, and at 4 minus 1, and at minus 2 minus 1, um, and I need to do a full cycle uh, before I get to that next point. So, well, better than that one I just did. Okay, I can maybe mark a point on here, so I, to remind me I need to be crossing it this way uh, as I'm drawing. Let's have a go. Okay, so you can see after one full cycle, I've gone up to one, I've gone down to minus three, and now I should be able to just carry on. Like that. Okay, and one thing you should watch out for is um, in an IB question, you might be uh, given a Sorry, a domain in the question, it might say to go from uh, minus 2 to 5, for example, um, and that's what I've done here. And you might be penalized if you went beyond like that. Okay, um, so it can get a bit harder. It could have all four of these rules, and as we touched on briefly, it could have a negative at the front. Okay, if it, uh, maybe just quickly, I could do it as if it was negative. Two. Okay, you could do that whole process and then think about the flip if you wanted to. So it would flip vertically. And look like this. Okay, so the maximums become minimums and so on. Um, and instead of starting at the principal axis and going up, it now goes down.